Welcome to the Delaware County Commissioner's meeting of Monday, July 20th, 2015 at 9 a.m. And uh, we have a young man that uh, Nate is going to introduce to do our pledge. Good morning. Uh, this is Ray Wadby, and he is the uh, uh, student I don't know how they really word it, but it's really like a student helper. Work study. Uh, work study is the best word for it. He uh, is provided to us by the uh, VA, uh, cost the county zero dollars to have him. And uh, what he does is he basically goes to school full time, but comes here, uh, works a few hours a day uh, to help out with any of the Veterans Affairs type of things. So I uh, just want to welcome Ray. And he's been here a couple weeks, but his scheduling has been a little off in order to get him here. So we've got him here and just want to give him a, a big welcome. Start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Um, I was 13 years United States Air Force. Um, I'm an Ira Iraqi uh, Freedom Veteran. Um, I'm just glad to be here. You know what I mean? It's, it's a good place to be. Thank you. Lead us today in our pledge. Yes, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. That's what you made, John. Okay. <coughs> I would like to um, have everybody uh, got some people back from vacation. So we'll have the roll call, please. Mr. Henry. Here. Mr. King. Here. Mr. Reagan. Present. Mr. Murphy. Here. Yep. So we... Uh, have the minutes of the July 6th meeting. Make a motion to approve the July 6th meeting. I'll second. Roll call. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Ms. Reagan. I'll abstain since I wasn't here. Thank you. Okay, then we have a presentation from the work one. And Mrs. Helms is here, I believe, to fill us in. Good morning. Hi, my name is Lindsay Helms. I'm the manager at the New Muncie Work One. Um, I've been there for approximately a year, and we've actually started a um, soft skills golden ticket training program um, through the Delaware Work One. It was piloted through um, Delaware County starting in May. Um, we've had 15 customers go through the program. We've had nine staff members. Um, six customers have actually completed the program, and we've actually had two staff members complete it. Um, I had Mr. Brooks go through the program, and he's actually one of the uh, staff members that completed it. Um, we've had guest speakers every Friday um, from a variety of businesses around Delaware County. Um, we've had manufacturing, medical, and um, call center. Um, HRs or CEO positions come in and speak to the class about the four components of the Golden Ticket soft skills training. Well, thank you so much, and uh, as I've been saying on the Work One Regional Board, and that is one thing that we hear is that these young people, the, the soft skills, uh, show up on time, following the rules. Yep, it hits the four main components there, communication, professionalism, <coughs> uh, teamwork, collaboration, and the critical thinking problem solving. So it's a very, it's 8.30 to 4, Monday, or Thursday and Friday for four weeks. Um, they do a lot of hands-on activities along with um, some computer work and classroom communication skills. So. Well, I thank you for coming and sharing this with us. And so if anybody needs a job, just go to work on and ask for the goal. <coughs> yep, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then so we have a VI a contract for uh, community corrections. So we have Mr. Castle here today. And Good morning. I'm Ed, Mitch Castle. I'm the executive director of Community Corrections. We are coming before you this morning to try to get a contract signed and with BI. It's just our annual renewal. It's increased just a little bit because our equipment counts going up. Yeah. <coughs> Not a whole lot though. So that's about the only difference. You make a motion to accept the renewal contract with the uh, BI. I'll second. Roll call. Mr. Henry. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Well, thank you, Mitch, for bringing that. And um, how you getting along over there? I'm, sh I'm here. They're enjoying having you there. And you're 
you. I'm enjoying being there. And a lot of activity over there. It's been challenging, and uh, I, think we're, I think we're making some progress. You know, uh, I don't really think the public realizes what the community correction really does. I mean, the, it's just hard to explain, but how much, how many um, programs you have and the outreach that you are touching. We, we may look into doing some PR work. Yeah, how many clients do you have monthly, would you say? 1,200. 1,200, yeah, that's just wonderful. Thanks so much. Thank you, can I leave this with? Yes, but, um, Mr. Murphy? Mr. Murphy. All right, thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. He's Okay, now we have a warranty deed. <laughs> This is a uh, project that Angie gave me a condemnation of some property out on uh, uh, on the Nebo, where the Nebo uh, roundabout is going to go, and we resolved this uh, lawsuit with the uh, uh, council and the parties, and they have agreed to sign a deed. So we just need to have it before the auditor's office will record it. We need to approve it at this level. And uh, how, how many acreage are we talking about? Uh, I would need to look at the deed. I didn't bring the information with me. Less than an acre. Yeah, less than an acre. Um, there were three parcels that we needed to acquire right away from. Appreciate your work. Less than a half acre, I believe, on that one. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept the warranty deed. I'll second it. Roll call. Mr. Kane. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Murphy, on that. Okay, now we have an ordinance for the first reading. And um, is Marta here? She'd like to fill us in on this Yeah, uh, Marta Moody from the Planning Commission Office. And um, this is an amendment to the text of the county uh, zoning ordinance. And the, uh, the need for it really originated in the city of Muncie. Um, and uh, what it does is uh, deteriorated signs and inactive signs were treated the same and what we've done is split them out so that a deteriorated sign um, if, if it exists it can be given a notice and and uh, orders that it be fixed within 30 days or contracted to be fixed within 30 days if it's inactive then um, we give them six months uh, and then at the end of that if it's still inactive then um, they could be told to remove it and then for temporary signs uh, there are a lot of different variations of temporary signs out there these days and so what we did was we expanded that definition uh, a little bit to cover some of the different types of temporary signs that uh, that people use and would like to use and uh, we for temporary signs it used to be that you would get a permit for 30 days and then you had to m remove it for 90 days and what we've done is we uh, um, will allow a business to have a temporary sign for 45 days and then off for 90 days. So we gave them a little bit longer uh, time period. And this was heard in public hearing by the Plank Commission uh, uh, earlier this month. And um, it received a uh, favorable recommendation from the Plank Commission. I have not seen this, but from the artist's description, I don't have any problems with it. Okay. I make a motion we introduce the comprehensive zoning ordinance regarding signs. I'll and, second that. And what is that number? 2015 012. 110, thank you. Okay, roll call. Mr. Henry. Yes. Mr. Kane. Yes. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Thank you, Marta. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, was it zero what? One, two. Thank you. Thanks. <coughs> okay, then we have a resolution for approval. And uh, <coughs> Mr. Murphy, wrote, and what's this number? Okay, Mr. Murphy, you want to explain uh, this to the. Well, I was asked uh, to, uh, the, I think the auditor's office realized that we had the county for some reason or other owned some shares of stock in MetLife. Apparently, these were uh, from the, about the year 2000 that we had an option to uh, to cash those in and didn't do it, and therefore uh, we still have this stock. It's worth about sixty thousand dollars. We could not see any benefit to the county of owning shares of stock if we could have the cash instead to put into the uh, general fund. Yes. 
So I have drafted this resolution to approve the sale of that stock and putting the money into the general fund. Okay. That's dash O two three. The ordinance? Yeah, it's a resolution. It's a resolution. Yeah. Motion to approve resolution twenty fifteen dash zero two three. I'll second that. Roll call. Mr. Henry. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Reagan. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Going down to our uh, monthly. Mr. Brandon has his monthly weights of nature. Taking good care of us. Appreciate him. And then we have a payment of claims of. Um, $937,616.85. Make a motion to pay the payment of the claims. Second. Roll call. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Are you going to do the department head? Uh, oh, I looked over department heads. I'm sorry. Any department heads here? We have a couple back from vacation, and we're glad that our new sheriff's here. Okay, going down to questions and comments. Anybody have any public comments they'd like to make? I wanted to share something. Sure. Um, July 8th, NDOT um, led <clears throat> and opened bids for Bridge 85. They received five bids. And the lowest bid is um, Duncan Robertson um, at $1,965,293.70. Which was well under our engineer's estimate. Um, we haven't had our pre-con yet, so I don't know a definite day the shovel will hit the ground, but it will be soon, and I'll keep you posted. And you said you'd done work with this yeah, company, and you were pleased. And very pleased. And yeah. thought I'll prove it, so. Yes. Well, thank you. And that's uh, the Albany Bridge that will be coming down? Yes, Strong Road Bridge. We're saving it, putting it up. So, yes. um, thank you, Angie. You're welcome. Working on that, reporting that. Hi, I'm Marilyn Walker, Center Township Trustee. Um, good morning. Good morning. Um, Madam President, um, I would just like to address the letter that you sent to me on June 30th that I received when I got back from vacation. Um, you are ordered to in a code to hear our hearings when someone files an appeal, one of our clients, and you've been hearing our hearings, and this is about the letter that you this sent. The commissioners. The commissioners, yes. Are. And um, I'm kind of... Um, offended by you put that you would not be a rubber stamp for any trustee but, yeah. that made it sound like that you're saying that you're a rubber stamp for but you're just being a rubber stamp for me i don't i think it went out to who uh, all trustees that did not had it um, my letter i don't think so it was to go i i asked for it to go out to all trustees Okay, well, I, I would just like to, since you've, re, you've given this up, and I'm um, Mr. King and Mr. Henry, I would just like to make sure, and I'm sure that you do, um, when our client files an appeal and it comes in front of you, all you're supposed to do is make sure that you are, we, we as the trustee's office is filing, we are filing, our, we are following the rules and our guidelines by Indiana statute and Indiana code, okay? So on here, Mrs. Um, Reagan had put that the client has, this is the reason that the client has the opportunity to request an appeal for a healing, healing, hearing officer to listen to all the information and make an unbiased decision. Um, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page when that we hear a hearing that um, it's because you're supposed to make sure that we're following Indiana code and following the statutes. Um, I, I know sometimes it's hard when we, and it is hard for us at the office when you know, you're playing with someone's livelihood, and you know, you're, you're, it's a heart, you know, you know, that you're having to deal with also, but you know, also it's the taxpayer's money that we're dealing with. And I take that very seriously, and I was offended that you think that you're being a rubber stamp for me. Well, I, I'm sorry, I just really thought that it went out to all. We just had our first hearing in front of a judge that was well, a... I called all the other trustees, and I got a few of a hold of... Uh, uh, a hold of a few of them it did not they did not receive that letter no one no, received that so I wrote myself yes I do what 
Um, actually, it just says to Shannon Henry, Henry James King, Delaware County Commissioners from Sherry Riggin. And it was emailed. Would you like to go ahead and just read it from the public record? Thank you. Yes, I would. Um, Thank you. Okay. Um, it says to Shannon Henry, Vice President, James King, Member, Delaware County Commissioners from Sherry Riggin, President. Reference, Assistant Hearing Officer. After much thought and deliberation, I have decided to re relinquish the position of Delaware County Commissioner's Assistant Hearing Officer, effective of July 1st, 2015. As much as I've enjoyed the position, even though sometimes it can be trying, I cannot and will not be a rubber stamp for any trustee. That is why the client has the opportunity to request an appeal for a hearing officer to listen to all the information and make an unbiased decision. I do realize it, but you both have offer other jobs outside of being a county commissioner. That being said, I've come to find that the trustee, that the township trustees are more than willing to work with us on times and dates that the hearings may be held, as long as they're in 10 days window prescribed by the state of the Indiana codes. I've held this position since becoming a county commissioner, and I feel like it is time that I move on to other avenues, respectively, Sherry Riggin. But I, I'm going to be the one starting today that's going to start hearing the hearings. Uh, actually, I know when we become commissioners, I was going to do it in the first place because I come in and sat down and watched some of them with Don Dunnick when he did them. But after the first of the year, Sherry decided she wanted to do it. So, well, I came well, in also right, in December. That's what I'm saying, and, and allowed sherry to do it because she wanted to to do the poor relief hearings but as of today i'm going to do it and i understand as a law enforcement officer that we have to follow state laws and we have codes that we have to follow even though people might pull on our heartstrings and we want to give them we have laws and we have codes that we have to follow and abide by uh, so i will follow those codes and uh, i will abide by them and james that's when we get an appeal, when someone files an appeal and they, and when Patty or, or they send it to us, we, we look at it again and we make sure that we didn't make a mistake. Because if we make a mistake, we look at it again. Because people can make mistakes. But I, Sherry, I was offended because when I got on the phone and I called other ones and no one else received this, well, and you're, they were supposed to and it made me feel like we, no, because they, you, really, they really were. But. And so it made me feel like you thought that you was being a rubber stamp, and I've never asked nobody to do nothing for me like that at all because I do follow the rules and I do the guidelines and I'm very proud of what I do at my office and I think that I do it very well. So, um, thank you, I just, yeah. all I right. I do appreciate your service to the community. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank, okay. you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you very much. Okay, anybody else? Mr. Orball is gonna come up and fill us in on this. Ron Orball, Chairman of the Delaware County Soil and Water District. <coughs> You met Candace, she's usually here today. I got to be the privileged one. Uh, just wanted to bring you an update again on what we do. Uh, two weeks ago, we hosted a uh, pond workshop. Uh, it was a terrible evening. It was raining, it was cold, it was uh, miserable. 35 people showed up from seven different counties. So I thought well attended for the circumstances. I mean, they came as far as Hamilton County and uh, Dark County, Ohio. So we were very pleased. Um, next Wednesday, a week from Wednesday, we have our annual soil pit uh, plot demonstration. Next, uh, on July 29th, the, uh, at 700 South and 700 East. So you go out to the first road past Selma and go seven miles south. If you've never seen a soil pit, it's very interesting to see different layers of, of soil compaction, uh, water, how far the water drains into it. It's a very interesting deal. It lasts about two hours, so it's not going to take all day, but it's a very interesting thing. Soil compaction and water quality is what we do, what we try to, to improve here in Delaware County. And speaking of that, Unfortunately, due to the rains, we've had a lot of preventive planning measures come up. We have a lot of bare ground in, in Delaware County. And we're working on a program uh, to at least 
get operators and farmers interested in putting on a cover crop on these unplantable acres to assist them with nutrient uh, holding on that soil. In many times the herbicide and the fertilizers already been put on but nobody got it planted. <clears throat> so this cover crop it adds weed control, it will hold the nutrients, it'll keep the herbicide from leaching off. It's just a good, a good idea and, a, and a be responsible operators to the landowners as well as to the county, to the streams, to uh, public water sites. So right now we're, we're forming, we sent a letter to the state and we're forming a program that will help operators get that cover crop put on. Uh, we feel that it would be beneficial to the soil, the count, I mean, every, everyone. So and, that, and, that's and where we're headed. And you left off that it would hold back the corn stalks. Yeah, this will, this will keep residue from ending up in the ditch and you guys having to come and clean it out. Yeah. So that's, you know, there's, there's multiple, multiple benefits to putting a cover crop on this un, unplanted acreage and they can get some reimbursement right now there's we're working on that okay uh, we haven't got that together yet working with the state but there could be a benefit that part of that cost would be covered but even if they didn't they're still but it, there's benefit. there's maximum amount of benefit you hold the nutrients uh, one thing that you'll see at the at the cover crop the soil pit meeting is a sugar beet oh. in a box and that sugar beet is one of the cover crops that you can use. And it, the box will be right here, and the top of the beet will be right here. And it'll, the root will be clerk down on the floor. Yeah. That lets water, air, everything into that soil and let, lets it drain better. So cover crops are very beneficial. I was real impressed when I saw that. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty uh, impressive to see that root go all that way down. And that means that worm is down there. It, it's feeding all those micro nourishments and those organisms, and it's beneficial. The cover crops, like I said, hold water, hold nutrients, hold herbicide. Uh, in some cases, the herbicide's been put on. Cover crops won't be available as a as a uh, alternative, but in most cases, it'll work great so we're we're trying to get everyone to think about cover crops and, and reduce residue improve yeah, nutrient hold, management and, hold and that. ron while you're there you want to tell us about the little fence the triangle oh the little fence yeah we call it the little fence it's actually a big fence uh out on an airport property we put up a fence that will actually it's holding all the corn stalks away from that county ditch there on the east side of on, Walnut. On the east side of Walnut Street. <clears throat> and I'd like for everybody to go and drive past it and see what it's doing. Uh, it's, a, it's a demonstration, it's an idea. Uh, we have, with today's crops of being 200 bushel plus acreage, corn plants are, are you know bigger and healthier and harder to do something. And when we get these torrential rains, they still end up in the side ditch. So we'd like to get that not to happen because you guys don't want to clean them out. And That's all we're getting called, corn, uh, corn, corn stalks in the side ditch. Yeah. But this, this little fence will help. Mm -hmm. And again, there's not much financial assistance, but it's an idea that some people can work with to make that happen. So, and we do appreciate the farmers that are going down there and cleaning it out. And yes. Helping us. We yes. really appreciate that. On a personal note, they're starting to pay 35 this morning. Oh, okay. So. Well, thank you for coming today and sharing those. We appreciate it. Any, any time I can help, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Orange, Orange shirt. This, this is the uniform of the week. Uh, I just want to thank Center Township Trustee. She has been at the fair office multiple times uh, offering us assistance with her poor relief and when she gives us
poorly people work fair, isn't it? Work fair, it cuts down on our expenses. And the thing that, that people going to fairs want the most is a clean bathroom. That's what people will comment the most on is the bathroom. And Kay has given us people that are doing a wonderful job. The first lady she sent, uh, I had comments that they had never seen the bathroom that clean. So we do appreciate it. And uh, she told me today that she's sending out two more people. Uh, I hope they enjoy being there as much as we enjoy. And they work late at night, too, because they're Well. I mean, I've seen some in the afternoons. Um, they don't work as. Working. One, one working the evening because of the bus transportation. We give them bus passes, but if they don't have their own transportation, so we only have one gentleman working in the evening shift. So. But Kay has worked so hard to get this to happen and we have talked about it for a couple of years but we've just never been able to make it happen and uh, uh, she has made it happen and it's made a world of difference in the uh, condition of the bathrooms and so uh, uh, we certainly thank the trustees office. Jane, yes. you want to fill in on the weekend? Uh, weekend, uh, of course we're still into 4-H. <coughs> Uh, the uh, swine show is going on as we speak. I heard you had quite a few horse and pony. I had a lot of horse and pony. Uh, Donna had a terrific uh, pony horse pull on Saturday. We had 18 teams of ponies and 18 teams of horses. Um, last night was, yesterday was the motocross. Uh, Melanie was in charge of the motocross and, and we were down and we knew we would be because of the threat of the weather. But still it wasn't a bad night. Uh, the weather looks good for us. Uh, the carnival has moved in. Uh, I think we're going to have to have a landscaper after the after the fair because the fairground is so soft and people are just, you know, we're having having to shuffle people around. But anyway, 4-H is still going on until Wednesday night. And Wednesday night they will have their auction, and then 4-H will be gone, and then we'll have some open open shows of livestock. Uh, Del Astrop is doing a wonderful job down the Pioneer Village. He has Abe Lincoln, uh, he has Possum Molly, he has a blacksmith, uh, no kettle corn this, this year. Something happened to the kettle corn guy. Uh, but anyway, there's just lots of things going on. Lots of things going on. We certainly encourage people because this, this has been a year that we have really struggled with. In the Memorial Building, I always enjoy looking at the 10-year program. Is that Wednesday? They take those out Wednesday? Night? They take them out Wednesday. Wednesday. And I'm not sure the hours of those of the uh, Memorial Building. The hours is not quite as long as I'd like it to be, but they say they can't get volunteers. Oh, and the to, uh, uh, auctions. Auctions Wednesday night. Wednesday, 2 mm -hmm. Melanie, you want to talk about the mud bog and the... Memorial Building should be open 1 to 7 today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, according to their schedule. Okay, 1 to 7. Do you want to tell about the mud bog and the, the response you're getting on mud bog and uh, monster trucks and truck and tractor and demolition and road? I'll just talk about grandstand events. How about that? <laughs> um, we started out with a great horse and pony pole. Donna puts that together. That was Saturday. Motocross was yesterday and we dodged a bullet. We did not get wet while we were running motocross. Hallelujah. Uh, band contest tonight. We've got six bands. Cowan is our only Delaware County band that is competing. And then uh, Muncie Central, of course, had some issues with staffing and all of that. But they are going to open tonight with the Star Spangled Banner. So they will be there. So please come out and support. Um, and then, of course, there's five other bands. And I don't have those committed to memory. But um, so please come out and support that. Uh, truck pull, we get trucks from many different states that come. Our guys do a great job of putting that together. Um, so they're expecting huge turnout for that. Plus, I think the weather, they haven't, they've had to cancel some other ones. They haven't been able to get out other places. So I think we're going to pull a lot of uh, drivers for that on Tuesday night at 7. Demolition Derby is always a crowd favorite on Wednesday night at 7. Um, Thursday night, we've got a new event, Mud Bog. So that should be a lot of fun. The weather, of course, is really helping us out with that. We've got plenty of mud to put in that pit. So um, 
that should be a lot of fun that's Thursday night at 7 um, Friday night uh, new event monster trucks uh, come out at 5:30 for five dollars you can go back in the pits with a paid admission to the event um, you can go back in the pits you can see the trucks up close meet the drivers uh, they're also going to have um, freestyle motocross that they're going to do between the monster truck events uh, we're working with a local promoter to bring that uh, to the Delaware County Fair. Uh, the monster truck event will actually start at 7 with the pit party at 5.30. And then Saturday night we close out with the rodeo and we use 3 Bar J. Uh, Mike and Marcia Johnson are the stock contractors and we've worked with them for, this is either our, I think it's our fourth year to work with them and they're great to work with and they bring a great group of um, participants for that and that will be Saturday night at 7 and I think Pam's going to tell you all about the South Stage events. Oh yeah. We'll go to the other end of the Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Tonight South is uh, uh, Cook and Bell, Delaware County's favorite. Uh, we have uh, two or three local bands tomorrow night and Wednesday, third, or Friday night and Saturday night is Delaware Idol and that's really a lot of fun. The kids gather and sing their hearts out. Uh, and then I ha we have a special guy coming in on Friday. It's the living statue. If anyone can get out there and see this man, he is incredible. He'll be there from six to nine. He is amazing. He's awesome. He's awesome. And we have gone across the ends of the earth to get him here. So I think between on both ends of the fairground, we're going to have a lot of entertainment and a lot of fun. And then all the food and stuff in the middle. <laughs> so please come out and enjoy. How they were out there Saturday, the humidity was terrible, and they were just out there working. And Jane, uh, so appreciate the uh, shit little, um, was a picnic for John Wright. Yes, we have a new, new pavilion, it's called the John Wright Memorial Pavilion. And I don't think I've ever seen anybody as excited as John is with that. He goes up, up there with a lawn chair and sets and invites yes. people in. <laughs> Has a bag of potato chips, offers potato chips to people. And he is just so excited. We have gotten so many good comments on that. On that. Uh, on that bill. Floor, I mean, it's just for people to go and sit. And go get and out sit the down. And there are eight picnic tables in there. And, uh, and people are using it because I cleaned it up before where people left their water bottles and so people are are using it but it's just a nice a nice building that we were able to uh, refurbish and use the structure that we had there and and honor somebody who who really deserved and a little picket fence so the picket fence around it just sets it off uh, actually, that keeps skateboarders off of it. But anyway. And so. I'll tell you, my money says that he had breakfast out there this morning because I drove through the fairgrounds before I came to work this morning and I saw him walking up the midway towards the fair office. So my money says he had breakfast out there this morning. So when you're out there, please stop in and say hello to, uh, hello to John. Yeah, right there. You know, this is, I know you guys probably heard enough about the fair. But it's okay. Stand right here for a minute. And, this is, and it sounds like we're kissing each other, so, you know. But I want to tell you something. I had never really, I mean, I go to the fair, you know, when it's because it's about politics, you know, and you go every, every evening. But never have I been the weeks before. I'm not a 4-H person, so I've never been the pony and, the, you know, the, the cow shows and all that kind of stuff in the 4-H. But I've been out there, like Jane said, about every day, checking on making sure everything, my workers are showing up and everything's going on. And I never knew what it detailed. And I never knew how dedicated the fair member, board members were. And I'm telling you guys what, you've got a true dedicated board members of the fair for the best, for the most part that I've I seen. Agree. I went out and I mean, um, Larry, I was calling Larry John for so long. I mean, finally he kept saying, looking at me, my name is not John, you know, finally I got it. But now I'll come John just to get him aggravated. But and then I went out and she was mowing and she was mowing one of those lawn mowers that goes like this. And we had just gotten one and I said, how do you do that? Because I, they've tried to teach me and, but mowing. I mean, and all of them just out there and they're all just going about doing one thing after the other. Constantly, every day, each one of them is out there doing something, whether it's mowing, it's picking up trash or it's doing something. So I just wanted to commend the fair board because I had no knowledge. And if you're not out there seeing something happen before that fair starts, 
it's unbelievable the stuff that has to be done. And the people coming through, I give credit to Marsha, the secretary. I mean, people like that that's on the sidelines that you don't ever see what happens. When I'm in that office, the phone's ringing a million times, people's coming in and out the door. So, on record, I wanted to say kudos. I mean, because it's, it's unbelievable. I had no idea, so I think you guys do a great job. I really do, so there you go. It's called a labor of love. It, it is, it's, it's something you have to have a passion for. Yes, yes. thank you. Thanks. Anybody else? <coughs> Oh, I'd like to motion to reset. Oh, oh, I, I just would like to um, fill in that we have some flyers for that the regional summit too, and the next meeting is July the 28th, Tuesday at 6 to 8 p.m. at the uh, Horizon Center. And in case you weren't able to go to the first one, you're still invited to come to the second one to find out uh, what the um, six counties are looking at and that your opinion is important, but um, it's something that um, anybody can come to. Do, there's some flyers in our office if you'd like to get one, but I'll entertain a motion to recess. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Henry. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Ray. Yes. Everybody have a good day. Thank you.